Okay, really quickly, here's the problem I was trying to solve. So what I had was I had a tailstock here, right? And with this tailstock, I basically had to figure out a way of this is a spindle for the tailstock, and the spindle is tapered. So which means it's got like I'm not sure what the taper is because they weren't standard back in the old watchmaking days, but three, two point four, whatever degree taper. So what I had to do is take a piece of steel and grave the steel down, not grave the steel down, anyway, into a taper, so I had a tapered fit. So I got a piece of steel, right, I put it in the lathe right here, and then I tapered it down. And the way you tapered it down was you basically measure the end part of, of the hole first, like that, right? And then you know the diameter of the end part, right? You don't know the diameter inside the taper. And what you have to do, or the diameter inside the uh, spindle. So what you have to do is actually build a part that goes less than halfway to the hole here, because this is the knockout hole. So this is for knocking this out once it's friction fit in. So, so what you do is you taper it in slowly, and as you're tapering it, as you're basically graving it down, right, with your carbide gravers, you use a Sharpie and you blacken it. And then as you're graving it down, um, once you've blackened it, you stick this in like this, and then you rotate it once, and then you pull it straight out, and then you can see the, the marks where the high points are. And then you use your graver again, and you take out the high points. So you just keep doing that. It takes about an hour almost to, to do this, but you keep doing it, and then you keep working your way up. So if there's a, if there's a mark on the end here, Right, you once you've removed that or graved that mark out, and you can see the black being removed. Then you can stick the the uh, tapered piece back in to, to the spindle again, turn it, and you'll see probably the next mark will be up a little higher. And you remove that, and you remove that, and you remove, go all the way up again. And then you may only be you know part way through by then, and then you'll see the mark start again at the bottom. And then you work your way all the way up again, and then you're all the way up again until you've done it. Patience is a virtue. So. Once you've done that and you have your piece, the second thing to do is to drill a hole in the end. So I had to fit this piece here, which is for drilling, right? So for, for holding very small drills into this. And it has an end piece in here that needs to be, that basically needs to fit in the end here. So what I did was, it's hard to find drill bits that are exactly the right size. So I measured the size of this I measured the size of what drill bit I needed, and I had a drill bit that was just a bit uh, too small for it. So I had a, I got myself a set of of Dewalt drill bits, and these are used for for drilling high speed or stainless steel, basically four times harder and all this wonderful stuff. And they're Dewalt, right? So I found a drill bit, basically selected a drill bit that was a little bit not. I didn't want it too big. It's a little bit too small. And anyway, I started drilling this. So when I started drilling this, you have to use, when you're drilling, you have to use something like this. And this here is cutting fluid. So you get yourself some cutting fluid, put it on the drill bit, and then you drill through. Basically, you, you take this once the uh, once it's in, once it, it's fit perfectly, right? And with no motion, this thing doesn't move at all. You put that into the spindle, like so. And then you've got yourself like that. Then you've got yourself this. You take a drill bit and you put the drill bit into the end end piece like this. I don't have the right size, but I'm just going to show you what I did. You put the drill bit in the end like this. And then you basically, you know, I do have the right size. You basically drill this out. And this is a piece of steel here that I got. I can't remember what, what type, but anyway, it's steel. So you drill the center out and you go back as deep as you need to go back. I probably went back further than I needed to, but anyway, went back pretty far, right? And as you're drilling this, you apply more of this um, cutting fluid, right? And it helps do the cutting. So, and then you go in and out with this. So you need to pull this in and out. You actually lock the, uh, the base and then you move this in and out like this, right? So as you're, as you're drilling it, let me tighten this up just for the heck of it here. Um, you move this in and out like that and then it gets rid of the, de the debris that you're drilling so once you're finished that right you've got yourself a hole but the next problem is the hole is a bit too um, 
this this is a bit too big for the hole. So now you have to take this and what you do. I got this uh, on, I think AliExpress or something from China. It cost almost nothing, right? It's for micro drill bits. And I found my number 48 collet or whatever. I pushed this through the back of the collet so this wouldn't hurt. So the the uh, this the threading wouldn't hurt the collet. Push it through the back, and then I very carefully remove material from this from my my drill bit. And then I, as I was removing the material from this, I then fit the fit this into my uh, my draw bar here, my spindle, right? And I just kept trying to fit it, kind of trying to fit it. I also use my sharpie to find the high points, and I move my sharpie along as it spins. Found the high point, fit again, do it again, do it again, do it again. And finally, I got a absolutely perfect fit on this drill bit holder, right? So it's absolutely perfectly fitted. And so now I've got a tailpiece that has a drill bit holder in it. Um, let me just screw that back in here. And the next step, so that can, can hold micro drills now in place. Now for friction, so my nephew just asked me, so Zio, which is Italian for uncle, I'm not Swiss, but my wife is. Anyway, my nephew said, so how do you hold that from spinning? So when I'm holding micro drill bits, there's not a lot of force on those. And they're, they're carbide drill bits to drill in the end of, of the shaft of a basically a, a drilling holes for a pivot for a watch gear, right? So, so my, I'm looking at 0 0.08, 0 0.07, 0 0.09, that kind of size. So it doesn't take much force. So all you do is take a piece of tape like masking tape, or whatever, and you put the tape on the end here between the, this, this metal and this and this chuck, and then this will hold it in place. Now, once you're finished all that, you say, okay, this this is stuck in here, so this is the knockout hole. So as a final step, I took a piece of metal again, and I took this metal and I shaved it off. So it's let's see if I can focus in on that. So it's round on the end, or sorry, it's a uh, it's pointed on the end domed and then this uh, tapered there this tapered end piece is part way into the hole you don't want it actually halfway into the hole because this part of the um, get this out of the way the pointy piece part needs to actually be just slightly down so as you're let me see if I can do this Let's see if I can focus in there's the hole so as I put this in like this, this is a knockout punch right I want to be able to see if I can focus this for a second. Uh, there we go. I want to be able to hit this right on the end so it bam pushes that out. See, see how that worked? So it goes through and the beveled end, the pointy piece of it, actually knocks out the knockout, the friction fit. Um, I forget what these are called, but anyway, it knocks this out because this is totally tapered and friction fit. Okay. And it's not to one of the MT standards, like make an MT0, an MT1, MT2, because these are old watchmaking lays, and they didn't have those standards in place when these lays were made. So you have to hand do this. So anyway, that's how I did it. I built the tool, so now I have a knockout pin built as well, so I can pop that out when I need to. And so I'll keep um, these three parts all together, a rubber band or something, and that's my, um, that's my uh, drill bit holder here like that and that's the there the drill bit goes in the end perfectly because I drilled that hole a little bit bigger and I had to compensate by drilling this down a bit and then I have the tapered pin in the end like that and a knockout pin and now I got myself a tailpiece that'll hold a nice drill bit so that's it it's a nine minute video I just sort of talk my way through it as opposed to showing you how to do it but it's pretty simple the main point of the whole video is to be very patient when you're actually sizing this out of the way very patient when you're sizing this so you got to use this marker use a sharpie and then continue to to mark the metal and then and then uh, grave down the high points as you taper this into place start at the back and as the back as the end point starts to fit then you work your way up and then you just keep working your way up until it works perfectly so and don't go past the center of this hole here if you go past the center of this hole then a the knockout pin will not work so that's it. So I decided to make this video to help anybody who's trying to do this because there were no on, no videos online. Um, Bob uh, Tasconi did make does make a video. He's he's got great watchmaking videos, by the way. 
Bob Tasconi, hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing his name right, he's a great guy, and he did make a series of lathe videos that did show me how to actually taper this and how to use the Sharpie to actually mark it and everything else. So I didn't know how to do that. Bob said, hey, you should watch my video. I had the videos, but I hadn't got down, down that far, so I kind of apologized to Bob. And once I did it, I tried this yesterday, and I just it took me about an hour and a half because I really took my time so I could have a perfect fit, friction fit, because this is all friction fit, and it will not spin. It gets stuck in there, and that's why I have a knockout pin. Anyway, thanks to Bob Tasconi for that. And, um, and also, uh, I just recommend going to Uncle Larry's Watch Supplies online, Uncle Larry's Watch Supplies, because he actually provides a lot of nice tools that you can use in watchmaking. Um, he also sometimes has chucks available for this and, and other things. But building the taper, you're going to have to build your own taper for your lathe. And this is a, a peerless lathe here that I have. Um, I'm going to have to probably build um, another one for my bowley lathe so that I have, I have an end piece for the bowley as well. I doubt if this taper will fit in my bowley. I actually haven't tried it yet, so it would be kind of cool if it did. And I have a bowley Lennon Reform lathe as well, and I doubt if this will fit in that as well. So. Anyway, but it's good for this lathe, so it's all good. So now I can actually drill out the end because it was a number three gear in a pocket watch, and the and the uh, pivot on the end was broken off. So I wanted to clean that up, drill a hole, and put it re-pivot it, put a new pivot in. So to start, I had to make the tools to do this. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, um, and I'll just keep putting videos in line until my wife doesn't let me anymore. That's all she wrote, baby.